All right, what's going on? What is going on, people? It's your main man, Everything by John. I'm right back at you with episode two of the Everything by John podcast. Um, I'm here with my guy, Edward. Uh, he's about to introduce what's himself up? to y'all. What's up? What's going on? Say what's up to the people, man. Hey, what's up, guys? It's your guy, Edward Jarvis, a.k.a. Eddie Funds, because I funds businesses. And I'm actually starting a YouTube channel. You guys are going to see that coming soon. Yeah. Yeah, all right, bet, bet, bet. Yeah, we're gonna get into all of that. I'm, I'm gonna put all the uh, all the contact info in the description below his channel and everything. So, um, like I said, I started this podcast to kind of put you know different people out there with um, you know, put their voice out there and um, and everything they do. So, when it comes to careers and um, you know, just kind of like their upbringing and what kind of brought them to you know their future endeavors and things like that. So, I got my man Ella here. Um, let's start off with just really, like I just said, like how you grew up, where you from, and um, and really just your upbringing. All right. Well, I grew up pretty good. Like um, I had both parents, you know, and that's kind of rare from where I come from. I'm from mm. Queens, New York. Mm. Um, actually moved away from there when I was 15, mm -hmm. and I actually cried a lot about that, but, mm. you know. I didn't understand it until like a few years ago. If I if I never moved away, I would have never graduated high school. You know, mm. I moved to um, Bear, Delaware, Newcastle County. I don't know if you ever been out there. Uh, I, I'm familiar. I'm not familiar. I'm not too familiar with Delaware, but I've been in Maryland. Though I was I used to play ball out there, like by the grass and everything with the kids out there. They they was nice too. You know what I'm saying that was like when I was like 14, 15, something like that. Okay, okay. Well, it's yeah. like right next to Maryland. Like, um, okay. actually, you could walk to Maryland where, mm, like, okay, that. crazy. Yeah, yeah. But, but okay. um, moved to Delaware when I was 15 just so I could finish high school. And, um, yeah, I had to because if I would have never, um, if I would have never moved to, to Delaware, like, I would have kept on cutting school, hanging out with the wrong crowd. You know, when you're like in a suburban place like that, it's like, what are you going to do? Cut school and be in the woods? So mm. I had no but to, you know, get that diploma. Mm. But, you know, of course, young and, um, you know, <laughs> having parents that only believed in, um, you know, the necessities and, you know, good education and stuff like that, I actually had to uh, um, indulge in. A, not indulge, I'd endeavor in um, illegal activities only because, like, my parents is not, like, dressing me fly and stuff, you know, so I used to go to school and get teased and stuff, you know, so I had to, um, I had to get that money. And that's where my entrepreneur career started, actually. Mm -hmm. so, you know, so, so, oh, so I was about to say, so basically you translating all of that into saying, like, yo, you know, I was tired of, being looked at as bummy, I just got into the street. Like, I was just tired of it. I just started hustling at an early, at an early age. I mean, I wouldn't even call it the street at that time. Like, um, you know, in the suburbs, it's a different hustle. Like, um, when I was growing up in New York City, like, like I said, I had, I had both parents, so I didn't grow up, like, you know, like, living that hardcore life. But, um, you know, out there, it was basically, like, no rules. It's not like you have people out on the corner, like, making rules and telling you that you can't sell here and stuff. You know, it's that suburban grind. Mm. You know, so that's where, like, the entrepreneur in me actually kicked in. You know, so um, I basically hustled without a problem. Um, had a couple of jobs here and there. A few jobs that really stuck out to me was, was going door to door. You know, like, that was actually my first intro into, into legal sales was, was – um, was going door to door for a roofing and siding company. Oh, okay, okay. So, so doing a roofing and siding company job taught it, it led you to do what exactly? <laughs> so long <laughs> story, man. It's a long story. So, like, I mean, if 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 you want, I mean, you know, because because my, my 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 platform on my platform, I'm trying to do like the whole no fluff, but at the same time. If you want, you, you can get into it if you want. You know what I mean? Statue oh, yeah. limitations, everything like that. But, you know, something. I'm going to get into it. I'm going to get yeah. into it. That's a long, it, it's a long, you know, like you'll figure out by the end. Like, it's crazy. Like, okay. My life, just everything from beginning to end pulls together, like, where I'm at right now. You know, so that's All what right. I meant by that. Like, yeah. um, 
So where was that? So so basically, you was like what, fifteen and sixteen when you was doing the roof and the soldering, and then you switched up to. Oh no, 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 no! This is after I graduated. Um, okay, okay. You no, know, um, I started hustling around like fourteen, fifteen. And um, I found the whole roofing and siding thing when I was like 19, worked there for like about a year. I actually had a lot of success over there. And so, you know, like my street life and like my um, work life just like clashed because this is when we got older, like, you know, so um, different. This is not like you're not just going to school and selling little nickels, nickels and dimes anymore. Like, you know, like I'm working a real job, but I also yeah. got a lot I got a lot of other stuff going on, mm-hmm. like, you know what I mean? So um, basically that lifestyle kind of came to an end after my, um, after my father passed away in 2011, I was mm-hmm. about 22 years old. And then after he passed away, I was just like sick and tired of how everything was going, you know, like not making a lot of money. I wanted to actually like make a lot of money and be somebody. So mm-hmm. that caused me to leave home and I moved to Atlanta, Georgia, you know, mm-hmm. ATL okay. shop. <laughs> I had ATL a lot shop. of <laughs> Okay, okay. And how, how old were you when, you when you moved out there to ATL? Well, it was the end of 2012. Um, no, no, it was the beginning of 2012, end of 2011. I was 22 years old and... Mm-hmm. Um, I moved out there with the intention of being a rapper, like, you know, but that ended up not happening. Like, no, um, my my intentions was to get a job at like Popeye's or McDonald's or something and pay for studio time. But I ended up getting, getting mixed up into, into like, you know, kind of a white collar organization where, um, you know, had to do with, 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 um, transporting cartons of cigarettes and, I actually um, made a lot of money doing that, and it changed kind of it changed my lifestyle. Kind of kind of took me from being that kid that sold sold nickels and dimes to being something more than that, you know. Oh, so hold on, so hold on. You was you was you was transporting cartons of cigarettes. Yeah, by the thousands. Oh snap! So yeah, I mean, I well, shit, I I never heard of that one. Actually, I heard about you know Hustin Lucy's from you know on the corner or even in the stores, but you talk about I mean, about about where wholesale. Where come from? <laughs> wow, yeah, from the cars, yeah. So it was, it was, yeah, y'all, y'all was the one that was supporting that, right? I mean, yeah. uh, supplying that. Yeah, yeah, basically. Wow, 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 that's crazy. <laughs> you know, and, and that actually changed my life. Um, it took me from being that kid that just sold nickels and dimes that knew that little hundred dollars, two hundred dollars to. That guy that knew like thousands of dollars, quarter million, counting money until like right here hurts and like. <laughs> yeah, you told you said quarter million, so you so you was up in the, into the into the quarter million doing like selling by the kind. Yeah, we was killing it, like wow. you know. What I mean? And I um, the reason why I could talk about it now is because I ended up getting arrested. <laughs> so oh, okay, it's like okay. it's all free game. I talk all the shit I want. So okay. um, arrested but not convicted. I actually hired a lawyer. Um. And, and that goes to show if you get caught and don't tell on yourself or others and you hire a lawyer, you could mm. actually get, um, you could beat everything. So mm. I got away scot-free, illegal search and seizure, you know? Mm, okay, okay. Yeah. And, circumstance, and, circumstance. Yeah, I actually had, and the crazy thing about our um, court systems is I actually had to hustle to pay, to, to pay my lawyer. So with that mentality of like, okay, I was just at this level and I got knocked down back to right here. And um, I'm used, before that, like I had the, hold on, you can edit that out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you good, money. keep going. All right. I basically like, I had to sell drugs to pay back my lawyer. And um, that kind of started something that I didn't want to, to to start, like, you know, because before that I was up here and then after getting arrested, that shit knocked me back back down to right here. So then yeah. getting a little bit taste of like getting back into the life, like, you know, I started to get back up again and things mm. started to get, you know, a lot more dangerous. And yeah, yeah. you know? Nah, that's so, a that's a common that's a common story because you know, there's a, there's so many people. I could just I literally know people personally like 
and just so many stories you hear back to back again, like people get into, you know, whatever they do in the street or whatever they do legally and they get into, you know, they get caught up in the system and then they find out they don't even have no mail bail money or lawyer money and then they come out like, you know, either remanded or or they come out on bail and then they just, they, they look left, they look right and they start hustling again and they get caught up again even and even in a, on a worse case, you know what I'm saying, on a worse like situation. So it's, it's, it's sometimes it's like, it's like, it comes back to that whole psychological thing that I always talk about, you know, with, with us being as young, you know, young black men, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes we just get caught up. Like most of the time we get caught up because, you know, we look at all the, it's, it's so many different factors, like things we go through, you know, things we've been through, you know, time and time again, psychologically, like PTSD and just so many different, like so many Bro, different. Bro, I got trauma. PTSD. I don't even know how oh, I got Like wow. actually about like last year, like just when I started getting, well, Two years ago, when I started getting my life my life right and everything, I went to the to the doctor, and um, she said I should see a therapist. So I went to see a therapist. Therapist talking about I had PTSD. I'm like, I, I was oh, wow, wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. You know, so that's actually crazy. But um, yeah, man. But after all that wear and tear and and all of that, you know, it weighs down on your heart because when you're actually living that life, like. Nobody ever talks about like, you know, the friends that stab you in the back, you know, the like the females that only like said that they love you for your money and stuff. And then when you go to jail and you lose it all, they're not around no more. Nobody's around, you know, and that's um exactly what happened is when yeah. life was good and everything is going good. Everybody's around. But as soon as a shit hits the fan, people wow, poop, wow. disappear, you know. So that's, that's, a, that's a regular story, yeah. Yeah, and me, like, I'm actually like somebody that really cares. Like, um, call me a sucker for love, but like, I actually loved hard, and like, um, that shit just just actually wore me down so much. I actually started started using my own supply when I was about 26 years old. I started using, mm -hmm. you know, and you started you know, started using as in like uh, like what exactly like like using like drugs or. Drugs, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it, it was actually some of my darkest times. And like, mm. you know, being young, like, um, always, you know, dabbled and dabbled into like cough syrup and like pills, you know, oxys and roxys and stuff like that. But this time it was it, it was something way worse. You know, it was actually heroin. And oh wow, yeah, that was my darkest time ever, man. Wow, wow, wow. I mean, damn. And 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 when you was 26, what what year was that? This was about 2015, 16 around. No, 2016, 16. Okay. The end of okay. 2016 I started and um I actually stopped the end of 2017. So I was on drugs for about 10 months to a year, you know. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people said that there's no coming back from that, but I shocked everybody, you know. Mm -hmm. Came back. That's what's up. And that's what's up. Brother right. Down, right. You know? No, that's a that's a big fact. That's a big fact. So, and, and how long did it take you to? How long? Did, how first of all, how long was that whole period of just doing everything? You know, doing all the drugs and being in that sunken place. And how long did it take you to get right? Well, I would say I started like around. 2016 in the month of say August, September ish around there. I got clean the next year around October. And then, um, you know, just going back and forth trying to get my life right, um, working odd jobs and stuff like that. To, to be honest, my life still ain't right. And that's just coming from an entrepreneur point of view you know yeah. um a lot of people looking from the outside in will be like well he's a lot better he's doing good but i am nowhere near where i want to be at and if i t and when i tell people where i want to be at they look at me as like somebody that's like um what's the word trumpish I just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Wait, wait. So, 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 so. Let me just get this straight. At this point, right now, are you completely drug free or like still dibbling, dabbling a little bit? 
Well, I mean, I smoke weed, and I don't okay, consider okay. that yeah. a drug. Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. That's, um, that's regular. After I got clean in, in 2017, in, in the month of October, I still dibbled and dabbled sometimes. Like, there have been... There have been times where I forgot my, I forgot to renew my my medication because you know you get um, a month's supply of the medication that you get to um, actually stay off the drugs and not feel and withdraw okay. symptoms and stuff like that. And there have been times that um, I ran out and um, missed my doctor's appointment and um, mm -hmm. you know had to go just going through the motions. Yeah, but. That's what will make you or break you because it's yeah. when you get in your feelings and be like, oh my God, I just relapsed and um, mm -hmm. start using and using again. That's when you're going to go spiral back down. But like yeah. me, I didn't, I didn't really count that as a relapse. And between me not counting shit as a relapse and me not going to like Narcotics Anonymous and saying that, that I'm an addict. I am able to, to to be drug free for about a year and a half right now. Wow, that's beautiful, beautiful, man. So and and that's why that's why I kinda, you know, wanted to create the platform too, because you know, people I want people to look at you as an inspiration. Like you came, you know, you you had your upbringing, you had this, you had that, and you got into, you know, different little situations um in your life and you became able to, you know, uh, 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 the rest during those situations, you became durable during those situations, and and now you're at the point where you're drug free, and a lot yeah. of people don't even don't a lot of people don't even give themselves the chance to to even give their body or their mind the 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 voice to say, okay, well, I could do this, you know, I could get through this because we all go through situations in life, we all go through situations like the biggest entrepreneurs, you know, the biggest hustlers, the biggest everything, they all been through it, they all been through something. You know what I'm saying? So it, builds it builds everything. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes we sometimes we 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 cut ourselves short and then we don't even realize our potential. You know, and, yeah. and that's a big problem within our own community, you know what I'm saying? But shout out to you, congratulations again for you know for persevering, you know what I'm saying? For persevering through, yeah. through everything. And speaking of that, you know, well let's let's fast forward a little bit to from, Yeah, let's talk about the come up. Yeah, let's talk about the come up. Let's talk about from when you when you when you finally figured it out in your mind and said, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna get right. You know, what year was that and, and what led you to start really getting into the actual like business funding in, in that industry right there? Okay, let's get back to October 2017 when I finally like quit drugs. I moved like I was in Maryland, which is really bad for drugs, especially the suburbs. Like um it's actually a walking distance to Delaware, so I wasn't that far from where I moved from. But um yeah, basically this is what happened. When I got clean, I moved to a homeless shelter in New York City because obviously I lost everything, I lost everybody. So in that homeless shelter in New York City, I was just there were so many people using drugs around me like i'm around the worst of the worst people like no but shout out to new york because they do have the best shelter system i mean minus a few employees that are haters you know <laughs> they hate them so we'll get to that yeah so this is what happened one night in the shelter i prayed to god i was like hey like i really need a job god like you know and so the next morning I was walking back from the church because, you know, you go to the church and you get that free breakfast and the black truck pulled over and he was like, hey, man, do you need a job? And I'm all like, yo, I just prayed last night. Like, I'm thinking this in my head. Like, I just prayed last night for a job. And like, I'm walking down the street, like, you know, and a black truck pulls over and says, hey, do you need a job? And I'm like, hell yeah, I need a job. He's like, hop in. So I hopped in the truck and he did clean outs. Dude's name was um, Nice. He owned a, um, a clean out business called Nice and Clean. Shout out to Nice because he really helped me out during the hard time. You know, um, I made $40 for like working like two, three hours that day doing a That's clean so out in downtown Manhattan in the financial district, which mm. was later on in the in three months later come a big part of my life, you know, mm. shocking. Okay. Okay. You know, and um, yeah. So I worked with Nice for about three months, um, making anywhere from 20 to like $100 a day. Very few days being $100, though. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very few. And um, I was just, I had that feeling like, not that it wasn't good enough, but I, I could be more. 
you know, I felt like I could be more. And I like it took me back to that time to where like I was knocking on doors and and doing a sales job. Like, you know, so yeah. I went on Craigslist and I went to the sales department. I'm, I'm in the sales section and I, I no resume, no nothing. Copied and paste the same message to everybody. Hi, my yeah. name is Edward Jarvis. I used to do door to door. I'm a really good salesman. Here's my number. Like, you know, yeah. copied and paste every link I could find. Then yeah. um, a old, well, ex stock broker by the name of um, Dave Barnes called me up and he said, hey, man, like, um, I got your email and I want you to come in because I really liked your email. You didn't send me a resume. He was like, I hate reading them things. Like, I'm going to hire you anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, like, I came in and um, he was a cool dude. It was like the craziest interview ever. It was just weird. Like, you yeah. know, and um, I started that same day. Like, right after the interview, he was like, get to work. <laughs> like, yeah. right after the interview. So, I was like, bet. So um, how he explained it to me was that we're selling money, you know? And this job was actually, um, the interview was in Sunset Park in Brooklyn. So he okay, said that okay. money. So I had to cold call a bunch of business owners and give them a spill, you know? And um, yeah, basically that's when I found Merchant Cash Advance and mm -hmm. then becoming a business loan broker. That place mm -hmm. in general only concentrated in, on merchant cash advance, you know, like daily mm -hmm. payments, high interest, you know, um, big commissions, but okay. not okay. at that time. That's before, like, I was what I am right now. I was only making 20% commission, you know? Mm, but okay so 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 hold on so let, let's let's just let's just you said merchant cash advance so for the people out there that don't even know what mca or merchant cash advance or business funding is break it down what is exactly a merchant cash advance okay a merchant cash advance is basically borrowing money hold up <laughs> <laughs> we gotta be real technical because you know how it is with the with the industry and, and yeah. the setbacks and everything. Okay, a merchant cash advance is basically a short term advance for for business owners. Like you know, like I know it's it's illegal in New York and they and, and then they don't have like the loan to pay days for people with jobs and stuff, but it's right. basically like a loan to pay day for business owners. Like you know, like right. you might need more inventory or or you might need just a little bit of, um, might need a couple of thousand dollars just to pay your employee until the end of the month or something like that, you get an advance, you know? Exactly. Um, and I, I, love, I love that definition you just said because it's basically like uh, a huge payday loan compared to a regular payday loan, but for businesses instead of just an individual. Yeah, but a payday loan, like, um, it, it's a good it's a good explanation, but a payday loan is crazy interest. Like oh, yeah, those yeah, guys yeah. pay like four hundred percent. Right, right. Because it because yeah. they're getting on the same day. They're getting as soon as they apply. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they so they're paying for that service. You know what I'm saying? Because keep in mind, you know, this whole industry and of course, you know, I was uh you guys already know that I do business funding as well and, and we both mm -hmm. that's how we that's how me and my guy Edward met, you know, through because we were actually in the same group together. Um, on Facebook and we, we were mutual friends um, in that space. Um, but keep in mind, you know, this space itself is here because of the fact that, like you just said, businesses need money and they need capital. They go into these big banks like Chase Bank of America, et cetera. And, you know, they have this huge process of paperwork and a long response time. And by that time, you know, these businesses are out of money or out of time. So mm -hmm. these, these loans right here, these, these, you know, advances, these merchant cash advances, and there's different forms of this. Of, of funding um, is basically to relieve you in a short amount of time, oh, yeah. you know, yeah, short amount of time, you know, you know, just a quick amount of money and you keep it moving, you know, and that's what people need. As and for businesses, for, for, for businesses, it's affordable. I was saying for yeah. individuals, they might charge you 400%, but for businesses, oh, yeah. it's a lot more yeah. affordable. Right. Like right. you're paying between like what, 15 cents on the dollar and the right, most right. 49 cents on the dollar. Right, you know, right, right, exactly, exactly. And that's all dependent. Form. Yeah, that's all dependent upon, you know, credit and revenue, things like that, of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. seen people that, that, like, defaulted before pay, like, 50 cents on a dollar, but that's because mm. they messed up and they, they had that history. screwed over a lender. But yeah, even though exactly. they could still get them a loan, that speaks volumes to how many people could benefit off of this program. 
right, right, right. Exactly, exactly. Oh man, okay, great, great, great. So, 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 just to put it in perspective for the people out there, so you went from, you went from, um, you know, being basically, you know, young and you know, trying different things and moving around to getting arrested to coming back and being homeless for a little while trying to figure it out. Um. Yeah, being being homeless and trying to figure it out back in New York, all the way from at that point, you know, at, why are you homeless in New York on Wall Street? And, yeah. and and fast fast forward a little bit to being still on Wall Street but at an MCA office and closing business deals. Oh yeah, yeah. C- coming from all that, it, and it's crazy because like it, it it took that office in Brooklyn to introduce me to the game, and then like um other uh, other guys from different offices started coming in and telling me like hey these guys only paying 20 cents like you know you could go to wall street and get and, and get 40 percent on on every deal that you bring in plus plus you'll get better leads so oh so, so, so let me let me let me let me just ask you this real quick so how much mm-hmm. did you actually well first of all how how did you even get that first mca deal and how much did you make on that oh man like the first MCA deal, I would have to say it's a lot different than how other people, because I started off as an opener. So my first MCA deal, I didn't close. I, w- I just opened the deal. But okay. um, the first MCA deal that I actually closed myself was on Wall Street. And that was the greatest feeling ever to, to actually close and then get that $2,500 that took me out of being homeless. Like, no. no, no. Oh, so it took you out of being homeless. Yeah, shout out to Pearl wow. Capital. <laughs> wow, shout out to Pearl Capital. Wow, wow. So, so, um, so, what was the description on that deal? Like, what kind of business was it? What kind? Uh, it was a construction. It was a construction, construction company. company. Okay, and how much were they looking for? They was looking for about thirty, but I sold them on okay. forty-two and a half. You know, okay. forty-two, and forty-two and a half thousand. Yep, forty-two and a half thousand dollars, and um, I got fourteen points on the deal. Plus a three percent PSF. If you don't know, that's a um, professional service fee, which I didn't charge. They only got that because I was working at a, a company, you know. Mm-hmm. And that and that brought in the company about seventy five to eight thousand dollars, like no seventy five hundred to eight thousand dollars, you know. And then and, and your cut was twenty five hundred out of that. Yeah, my cut was twenty five hundred wow. out of that. Wow. And so that's what in after pocket. that deal. That's what made me start my own company. <laughs> wow, wow. So, so you went from, like I said again, you went from homeless and before homeless, you went from doing whatever you was doing, you know, you know, little stuff here to homeless to coming back here to New York where you was from to homeless to uh, Wall Street uh, while you was already, you know, in that in that down position back to Wall Street in the, in the shirt and tie. And now you close your first deal for twenty five hundred dollars, man, to get you out of that homelessness situation. Yup, it felt good. The best feeling ever, man. Wow. I remember because New York, well, New York is OD expensive to live in. So I actually got myself a little apartment in New Jersey, North New Jersey, right over the okay. um, bridge and all that. You know. Okay. Okay. So, Shout I out remember. to Newark, man. <laughs> I remember I stayed there for only a month though because um, I wanted to start my own my own company and being in a small apartment in the hood in Newark, New Jersey wasn't for me. You know, um, if I would have stayed at that place on Wall Street, I felt like they would have used me until um, I couldn't close any more deals. So I just left. You know, I left and um, I moved in with with one of my best friends. You know, well, my only best friend, the only friend that's that stuck with me through, any, through everything, you know? Oh, yeah, so at so that I, point, you uh, created your own, um, you started your own MCA office? Yup, that's when me and him started New Capital Funding, named after oh. my father. It's actually his birthday oh. today. Birthday day. Oh, oh, man, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. Wow, wow, wow. So, wow, and when and what year, obviously, so what, when exactly was this, when you actually started that um, you started your own um, I remember it like it was yesterday. It was September 20th, 2018, man. 2018, it was, wow. It was wow. the greatest feeling ever to have my own LLC. Like, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, no, it's crazy. I'm like trying to feel that too. 
Yeah, yeah. I actually just started my LLC like a couple oh, of, uh, only it's been yeah, it's been a month now actually. Yeah, JDBK Assets. That's the name of that. That's the name of my company and um that's my Instagram for y'all watching as well. Um JDBK Assets, which is basically um my first initial, my last initial was is John Doug and BK is like Brooklyn where I'm from. So and then assets is like uh, you know, it's, that's gonna be the umbrella for everything that I'm doing. So I'm kinda trying to I'm trying to start my trucking business and you know, business funding. I was already doing that. Yeah. And you know, buying real estate and just everything. So assets is just really the umbrella for everything that you know I'm trying to get into. That's what it's all about, assets, man. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, definitely, definitely. And speaking of assets, man, you got your own office. Like at that point, it's like you feel like you're on top of the world. But I mean, how how is business right now? I mean, with the with the coronavirus and and you know the recession and stocks plummeting and everything. Like how is how is the business funding industry doing right now? It took a hit for like two weeks, like you know, um, from from what I'm hearing, a lot of a lot of things is is getting back to normal tomorrow. Actually, on the first, no, okay. tomorrow the first. Yeah, no, no I think the first is Wednesday. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. mm -hmm. today's everything, Sunday. Everything's going back. Not everything's going back to normal, but a lot of programs are are, are going back to normal. You know, mm, okay. Like a lot more more people are going to be working from home and funding. You know. Right, right, right. Okay, okay. So, uh, so, so if businesses, um, so, okay, so if, if, so, so basically, you know, these, these funding options are based on, you know, most for the most part revenue, but if the revenue is not really coming in like that, what, what options do businesses have if they come to you and say, hey, Eddie, you know, I really need some funding, but I, I just don't have the revenue or as much revenue coming in. I mean, what, what can you do for them at that point? They could leverage their credit. If they don't have good credit, they could find the co-signer. Right. You know, having um good credit and having like you know a house to put up or some mm. type of collateral that that makes things even better. You could get more money, but definitely keep that credit right. You know, like a gotcha. lot of people come to me and say, "Hey, um, ain't this supposed to be against the business?" And um, I'm like, "Yes, yeah, it, 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 there's no personal there's no personal guarantee." And mind you, these are startups, but yeah. they're like, "Oh." Then, then why does my credit have to be right if it's if it's for the business? I'm like, so in that case, anybody with a hundred dollars could start a LLC and then go get a business loan. <laughs> it's a lot yeah. more than that, right? You know? Right, right. And that's why I tell my clients and just people in general how important something like credit is. You know, what I'm saying on a personal and the business side, because it's yeah. always going to be looked on. It's always going to be looked at as something like it, and that's collateral itself. Like even when you apply for an actual business credit card. For the most part, if you don't have any business credit or if you don't have any like uh, uh, history in, with your LLC or with your business, most likely, I mean, not most likely, you will have to PG your personal credit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like even me, I had to do that. Like I have to, I have to go through that same process because I just started my LLC. I'm fresh. So you have to look at it. Anybody yeah. has to look at it from a lender's perspective. Like they have to say, okay, well, why would a lender want to want to lend to me? What do I have on the table? Think I have about bad it, credit. Exactly. Like, would you want to yep. lend to somebody who has bad credit, which basically means that you don't know, you don't, you don't have good uh, history or money? Like, just would because I want to lend started an LLC? Yeah, just because <laughs> you started an LLC and it sounds nice. Like, people have to yeah. know, like I always say, people have to look at the mirror. Yeah, yeah, that's you know not saying? flying these days. Yeah. It's not flying now, especially nowadays. Like, it's getting way more stringent. So, if you want to have the revenue, that's a good point. If you don't have the revenue, you have to have the credit to back up on it. If you don't have the credit, you have to have the revenue. It's like back and forth. But that's a beautiful thing about being on your own right now. It's because back when I was in Wall Street, if it wasn't a merchant cash advance, they said, get it the fuck out of here. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like, yeah. that's yeah. all yeah. they wanted yeah. was yeah. merchant yeah. cash. Yeah. And that's, it really got on my nerves because like, you yeah. know, you meet some, like you talk on the phone to, to some of these business owners and you actually become friends with them. Like, you know, right, like I have, right, right. I have a lot of clients that just call me and I call them and we bust it up and stuff. So right. I'm not going to want to get them into a loan that I know that they have no business getting into when right. my bar from, from, from Wall Street is like, no, just close them. Nah, put me on the phone. Put me on the phone. Right, I'll close right, them. Right, right, right. Like, yeah. Oh, we're yeah. not here oh, for yeah. that. We're here to help. Like, you know, you know, so it's good having access to a whole bunch of different programs like term loans, lines of credit, SBA, invoice factoring, and equipment financing is a big one right now, you know? You're talking that talk. You're talking that language right now. Yeah. And, and yeah. startup line of credit is a big one. Actually, oh, yeah. if you're starting a business, 
like there's three programs that are really, really, really good that anybody can utilize. And that will yeah. be the startup line of credit that right. will give you like a little, a little cushion, you know, like if you need to hire employees, if you need to like, um, if, if you need to actually buy some inventory, if you need to put any um, down payments on equipment for equipment financing, that, that's how you could get your computers, your desk, or if you need right. a truck for a trucking company, or if you need some type of construction equipment or anything right. like that. And you could also utilize um, ground up construction loans right. and any type of real estate bills, right. you know, because it's good to own the ground that you're on. Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, man, you're talking that talk. That's beautiful that the people know that, man. It's so funny because I was actually working on a ground-up lease, um, not for myself, but for a client. Um, you know, it was, it was ground-up construction. Mm, that's uh, that project. money, bro. Oh, yeah, that's cool. That and it was in New York, too, but it kind of oh, fell yeah, through. like 40K on that deal, bro? Oh, man, <laughs> no, no, yeah. I mean, I, more like 400K, but, you know, it fell through. It fell through. But, um, but yeah, you, yeah, but you had a good, another good point, which was, uh, you know, it's funny because, you know, when you talk about entrepreneurship, it's like we get into an industry and then we get on the, we find out about the entrepreneurship side of it and it changed everything because that's what happened with me. That's how I closed my first deal because I actually was about to join um, <laughs> one of those boiler room type offices, you know, and I was close, you know, I interviewed with all of them, you know, every, like every office you could think of in a week, but then I ended up finding out online, like I could start my own office, right? Yeah. So I started my, I started my own, uh, my own joint. And my first deal was actually somebody who contacted me from um, Instagram. They actually said, oh, their friend uh, put them on to my Instagram profile and they DM me. Oh. And uh, no, they emailed me and they said, hey, powerful. oh, man, they, they, she emailed me and she said, you know, she was looking for uh, she was basically looking to start a trucking company. And, you know, she was looking for options. She, she was looking for like around, uh, I think, like 100K. So me at the time, I was able to me and my partner. Uh, we were able to get her like 150. Um, you know, basically, yeah, just just the based off. First deal, 150. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was, she got 150, nice. one 150 k for for um for her and her partner. You know what I'm saying? So 150k overall. So they were able to start their trucking company as a as a a fresh startup, like with no revenue. Yep, using that equipment financing. Using right? that equipment financing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And and um. And it's funny because I want to start my truck and I'm like, damn, but you know, what she had was she had a, she was a, a assistant principal and she was on a job for like 30 years and she was like close to, you know, mm -hmm. close to retirement. So she was thinking about other ways of passive income. So that's why she came to me, you know, but like she said, she told me from the beginning, like she went to her bank, which was I think TD Bank or either TD or Bank of America. She was looking for a business loan and they wouldn't give it to her. Like they would, they would take so long on the response and they needed like so much paperwork and they needed like all these like questions and everything. And she just got turned off so much that she came to me. We got it done like three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. how, that's usually yeah. the, the story that you hear with alternatives for financing, you know, banks say no and banks take too long, but right. us, we're hungry. We get it done fast. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We, yeah, we get it done. We get it done. If we could get it done. We get it done. Yeah. We you get it done. Fast. Man. Yo, I'm, 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 I'm glad you brought that up. I'm glad you, you know, you're still doing your thing. So, I mean, to, 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 you know, I don't want to keep the people on it, on it for too long. So, um, I got some major, major gems though. Um, uh, let me see. Oh, my bad. Yeah. So we got some major gems for me, man. I really appreciate, um, everything you talked about and I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to keep the people on there for too long, but all the gems you just said and, it's like, this is why I do this platform. This is why I started the podcast because it's people like you that have so much that your story is so inspirational. Like you coming from where you are coming from to get to a point, to get back to the bottom, to get back to now probably, you know, the best place in your life and, and you're doing business and you got your own LLC and you taking, you taking the reins. Yo. So people can look at you and say, man, you know, this is possible. Anything is possible, man. Yeah. You can't give up. You got to keep on going. No matter, yeah. like, there was times <clears throat> when I was under, under the FDR, sitting on that bench, facing the water, feeling, like, depressed as hell, like my life was over, man. And wow. that, that right there actually kept me going. It cured my depression. Wow. Like, wow. like, no, like, wow. I haven't been depressed in a very long time. And that's all because wow. 
I I've been through it, you know. So it takes it takes a lot to bring me down. And when you keep thick skin like that, and you keep on grinding, you're gonna make it. You know, you're gonna make it. Man, those are those are some deep words right there. I know I know there's so many people out there that's gonna be watching and like, man, this is so like inspirational. Like he, you know, this guy has so much energy in him, and you know, there's people with relatable situations and 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 really like stories and they can really see you and say man i could do that i could climb to the mountain top too and guess what at the end of the day it's just the beginning <laughs> it's I'm just the beginning for you me. man bro, it's just the beginning for you and everybody all the time bro it's like and it's not even against our people but it's just like it gets me so mad like the stuff that they feed our people like like you know what i mean it's like um I like to single out 2 chains sometimes. Man, I'm just saying that, like, the people that control the media actually put things that's out there that, like, we like, that actually, when we actually do get up to that point, like, if you try to attempt to live, like, their lifestyle, like, their, their lifestyle is, like, really attractive. Like, you know what I mean? And if you try to follow that, it's going to knock you down. So mm. if you're just out there and you're just getting your first 10 Gs, don't get a Gucci belt. Don't go, mm. don't go put that 10 G's down on like a car or anything. Just grind. That could be ad spend, you know? Could be monthly payments on software. Like, you know, you need your emergency funds. You don't know when the next dollar is coming, you know? Man, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you said that because that's actually what me and my boy uh, my, in my first episode, um, Edward was talking about. Ed Hayes, shout out to Ed Hayes, man. Uh, we were talking about towards the end about, you know, just some of the things he instilled in his um in his in his field of wholesale and real estate is the same things that I was saying you can apply to any business which is money management and knowing what to do with ex ex as soon as you get that little bag you got to know exactly how to manage your money to twofold that so he said as soon as he closed his first wholesale deal he put it right back into similar to AdSense which was just regular Google ads which is how he closed his first deal and you just said the same thing you know what I'm saying? So it's just like as soon as you get close your first deal or get into a little bit of money, you put it right, you funnel it right back into your business. Instead Word of buying up. the next thing, you know, it's like we have this materialism concept, and it's like that's not making you any money back, no ROI in that situation. So oh, why don't you just funnel your money back into your business, man? But another thing that people like really forget to do, and that's how we met, is education. Education is just as, as as important as putting, that's actually you putting money into yourself. Exactly. Because if that business is spill, like, you know, they can't take that away from you. It's yeah. like, right now, like, we're all in a bad spot, really. We're all, we're all nervous about, like, like regulations coming and, like, um, interest rates getting cut, our pay getting cut. Like, you know what I mean? So <clears throat> at the end of the day, if this was to, like, like, if we couldn't fund businesses tomorrow, like, what would we do? Like, right. you know, like, right. and that's how I got into marketing. Like, you know, yeah. it's like, I do my own marketing. I'm not hiring nobody because if anything ever happens to these rules, like, I'm going, I'm, I'm going straight to a marketing agency because I'm nice right. at that. Right? Dope, dope, dope. And, and, and keep in mind, look, you see, and this is why I interview hustlers. Like, <laughs> I'm, all, I'm, all, I'm already two interviews in. I'm, I interview hustlers, like. That's what my boy Edward uh, yeah. was saying early in the, in the first episode. Like, whatever, he, he already found ways to diversify his hustle. Like, he, he's in the wholesaling. And he, you know, he started out um, doing the coaching. Then he started out, you know, actually selling leads. Like, look what you're saying. You're doing mm -hmm. the Google ads. You're doing the marketing. People were doing, like, 10K, 20K, 30K a month doing all yeah. marketing agencies for, for businesses. Easy, man. And that like, also, what I'm talking about. I'm going to let you in on a little secret that I do for extra money. You know, right, let, and, it, let the people know, let the people know. Yeah, this will actually, I don't know if anybody's doing it, but like a lot of people that are on YouTube say just like, yo, link in description. Exactly what I do is I have a lead magnet. It's actually very helpful. It's a free checklist, like, you know, and then when they download it, it's like I have affiliate links that that's going to help them out a lot. Like, you know, so like, of course, I got to get my my referrals, but like, okay, the first thing that you have to do to fund your business is get an LLC or a corp or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, right. You got to get incorporated. So that's the first thing on my checklist. And then there's a green button. You press that. It takes you to um, 
inc.com, well incorporated.com. Right. Right, you right, get right. incorporated and then shout out the legal I, zone. That's what I did with. <laughs> like, you know, and then I have like little random things like you know, from bank accounts. Um, like you know, you could get a free business bank account, like you know, that's an affiliate link. I have one like a lot of people don't know if you don't have like um a business number and a fax number, they're looking at that. Like if right, right. your email says at yahoo.com or right. at gmail.com, they're looking right. at that. They want to see right. at your business.com. Right, right, you right, know? right. So so matter of fact, quick question for me actually, um, because my um my LLC is called uh, JDBK Assets. I'm a fresh um LLC. I just got my EIN number and my actual email, which uh, you know, of course is on my contact info, but my email address is John at jdbkassets.com. But in terms of a business number, I don't have a business number yet. Is there a problem with that? Or people or people just like me that have everything except for that business number? I like Nextiva. Nextiva is like, okay. it's, it's so cool. Like they have, um, they give you a local number, they give you a, a, a fax number, and they give you a 1-800 number. So, so we can't, we can't rock with just the regular um, person number. I mean, you can, but like, you want to look like a business, like, you know, gotcha. and the more you look like a business, the more it increases your, your fundability. And like, of right, course, right. we're not looking for, for funding. We fund other people, but right. at the same time, I'm, I'm still like, looking for funding right now too, for myself, actually, because you know, I'm a fresh business. So now I'm looking for funding. That's the ironic part. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing We're we're in finance. Finance right. is a restricted, um, is a restricted industry. Oh yeah. Even more restricted now. Yeah. 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 But you, you yeah. can, you can get business credit cards. Right. Right. That's exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. I actually got yeah. a tool. I, I'm on a personal still right now, actually. Um, but I actually talked about it on a previous video, but I actually got like what 24k in personal um, funding in the last week. You know what I'm saying? So I'm trying mm -hmm. to be like I'm trying to get into the business side. I'm trying to get cars on my EIN. So I'm actually waiting on um, the Chase uh, Inc. Uh, business cash card. You know what I'm saying? I put my EIN number for that. So I'm trying to get you know I'm trying to build. But you know I got at this point I got too many way too many inquiries. You know what I'm saying? So I yeah, wouldn't be surprised. I, I've been getting a lot of denials too lately because you know they see. Do you do your own Nah, I don't do credit repair, man. I don't do my own, yeah. Nah, listen, as as a broker in, in general, like a broker of mortgage, loans, anything like that, you got to know how to fix credit. So, like, yeah. you personally don't know, have to know, but there's software out there. Like, um, I have a piece of software, and um, all, all I got to do is log into their credit monitoring and... Um, you know, fill in a couple of things, answer a couple of questions, and it spits out the um, it spits out the dispute letters for me. Like, you know what I mean? Mm. Artificial intelligence is like, damn, it's the future. It was like, Ooh. you can hire people, or you can hire robots. Like, right. you know, and it's, it's it's sad to say that um, that robots are better than people, but you know, <laughs> robots don't get tired. True, true, true. All right, well, you know, I, 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 I hear you. Even though we made the robots, but anyway. <laughs> but man, listen, man, yo, listen, listen, listen. I mean, at the end of the day, you dropping two, you not too many. I mean, bro, look, not, you you, you dropping a lot of jewels. You dropping a lot of jewels, man. I'm doing a side job. It's like boom. When I was like 18 years old, I used to work at Walmart for like two years, right? I used to work um on the tire and lube part, like like changing oil and shit. Yeah. But then, like, people will come in and be like, hey, do y'all do brakes? And I'm like, they don't, but I do. Like, no, okay. so I do I do side jobs. Like, people come right. through for, for funding, but they right. might need help with the website. Like, I, I noticed that they don't have a website. So I'm like, I do that. So I go and help them out. But, like, the business funding business still needs to be ran. So while I'm right. doing other stuff, I have artificial intelligence and like um, d d different software sending out emails, sending out voicemails, just like doing so much stuff for me. Super dope. That's super you know, dope. Since, like um, liking people's posts, sending out friend requests. Like there's so much things you could do in the world of marketing. It's like, it's mind blowing right now. That's super dope, super dope, man. But listen, man, I don't want to cut it, you know, make it too long. Uh, man, I mean, you, yeah, you we giving out so much, too game. much Yeah, yeah, we giving out a lot of game, man. A lot of free game, by the way. So, man, I want to end it off here. I want to, 
I want to really thank my, my my guy, man, Edward Jarvis. I mean, this guy right here, he's a hustler. He's an entrepreneur, obviously, as you can see, you know, coming from where he came from to the bottom again, to the top, and now he's just the, the world is in front of him, and I'm proud of him. And like I said, I only interview super duper hustlers. Yeah, of course, man. So, um, uh, you know, all his contact info and all his uh, every, all his links gonna be in the description below, like I always do. And that's pretty much the end of episode two. So, tell me what y'all think. Continue to like, share, and subscribe. Um, I really appreciate the support. I'm trying to get to you know 1K subs and 4K watch time, so I can get monetized or whatever the case may be. But for the most part, I really just started the podcast just to get other people, uh, really like like Edward and. And my other Edward, you know, from earlier today, I want to get people like that on the platform just to have their voice out there, man. Because, you know, there's people with some amazing stories. And I think, I feel like we need to balance it out more. Like, we see all the, you know, all the all the drama and the BS. And, you know, of course, we can watch that and all of that. You know what I'm saying? But we have to have an imbalance, man. I mean, a, a right. balance, <laughs> not an imbalance. You know what I'm saying? So try to put more, you know, more uh, good and positive content out there. So that's it for now. It's your boy, Everything About John, man. Yeah, yeah, any last words for the people, man? Man, just keep grinding, man. It's like you could do anything. The internet is a powerful tool. Use it. Right. Yeah, Use it. Definitely. The internet is a powerful tool. Use it. We're going to end it on that. All right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Peace. No doubt.